Hi, this is Father Carr, and we're looking at the first Sunday of Advent. What, if it, what is it you've been hearing a lot about when it comes to uh, 2012? Don't pay any attention to it. Don't listen to it. And then all of a sudden we look at today's Gospel, and it looks like a scene from 2012. What do we do with that? Well, it's an interesting question, because here we're looking at the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of a whole new liturgical year, and we're looking at Luke's account of Jesus' teachings. And here we're looking at what Jesus is saying about the end of the world. Well, let's look at that for a second. First of all, according to scripture scholars, we're looking at this happening around 80 to 90 AD is when Jesus is, uh, is when Luke is writing this. And so when we see that within that context, we realize that we're not looking at an eyewitness account. We're looking at people telling this is what Jesus said. And in that case, this is what Jesus said would happen because it's happened. It's the fall of Jerusalem, and all of a sudden, everything that was predicted for Jerusalem has happened. It happened about 10 years earlier with a place we call Masada, when the Roman soldiers came in and eliminated Jerusalem. It eliminated Israel, never to exist again until 1946. Obviously, the Jewish people were still here, and they were, they were in different places all over the world, but the nation of Israel didn't exist again until 1946. Jesus predicted that, and Luke is writing after the fact when we see this around 80 to 90 AD. And then we look at it further, and we see what's being said here. And we can see that within our own reflection. Jesus is saying to these people, he's saying, when the time comes, now let's reflect on that in two ways. When the Mayans are talking about the end of the world, they're saying that there's going to be some kind of cosmic event that will end the world, and NASA and everyone says, not true, not going to happen. But when we look at what Jesus is saying, it's not going to be some kind of cosmic event. What's going to happen is that you're going to have people who've rejected God, and therefore they're not influenced by the wisdom of God, which is something we see throughout the Bible. Throughout the Bible, we're seeing people being called to hear the wisdom of God, to hear what God is saying, and to act on that wisdom. When we have people saying, I'm not going to listen to that wisdom, I'm going to listen to my own wisdom, there comes a point that you realize that you can only go so far on human wisdom. And eventually what happens is your political um, sphere becomes limited because you can only go so far on human wisdom. And it's at that point Jesus is showing, on top of the cosmological issues, he's showing a breakdown in the political sphere, which leads to destruction, which he's talking about. You have wars and rumors of wars he talks about, and the very things that we think of at the end of the world. But what's he say about us? But you stand and be ready because your Savior is coming. So what he's saying in that case is, yes, this is happening, but you are part of the kingdom of God. Allow the kingdom of God to come and for you to go to the kingdom of God. Do not be caught up in all the struggles there, but allow yourself to become part of the kingdom of God. Now, there's an interesting phrase that you see in that passage. He says, therefore, be ready. Don't get lost in three things. Carousing, okay. Drinking, getting drunk. In other words, there's nothing wrong with drinking. Getting drunk, okay. And anxiety. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Something doesn't fit here. Carousing. All right, I can understand that. Getting drunk. Okay, I get an anxiety. How much of us have an anxiety every day? How much of us find ourselves worried every day? And Jesus says, don't worry. That's going to lead you down the wrong path. When you are ready to serve God, then you are also ready to say, can I trust in him enough that I won't worry? That's what Jesus is saying to us all the time. And he's calling us not to worry. So, how do we do that? How do we prepare ourselves? We allow ourselves to be transformed, as St. Paul says. We allow ourselves to experience the wisdom as we see throughout the Bible. And we allow that to transform us to the point that we trust in God and know that he is with us, and then we act on that trust so that we're loving others. Because, as Father Jonas says from Kansanova, when people are under a lot of struggle and a lot of pressure, who do they look to for the one who's going to be there as their support? They look to you, because you're the one that says, my hope is in Christ, which is what we're called to do. You see, 
in Jesus' image, he's saying to us, be people of faith that when people feel there is no stability here anymore, where do we look? They find you. And who do you represent? You represent Jesus. Remember what St. Paul says, we are ambassadors for Christ. So when we look at that scene, don't just turn around and say, oh, this is great, the end of the world is here, as Jesus calls us to do, as much as that people might say, well, why would I do that? Because Jesus says so. But more so, oh, I want to be an influence when people have their own little crises in the world. And I can only do that when I live the faith as Christ calls me to do, when I become uh, an element with my community where I can be a person of faith, where my community can be people of faith, and we can be there saying, come, come to the land that the Lord will show you his peace. Turn from your anxiety and know that the Lord is with you. And the only way we can do that is when we listen to the words of Jesus and follow him. God bless you. And so here you have this total destruction and elimination of Israel.